Hi everyone, so today we're going to be discussing vitamin D and osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is a fat-soluble vitamin D. It is stored in the adipocytes, also known as the fat cells of the body. A few of the food sources of vitamin D consist of fish, such as mackerel, salmon, milk, along with eggs. Even though there are a few food sources of vitamin D, the main source is none other than everybody's favorite sun, summertime friend, the sun. Let's step away from vitamin D for a little while and discuss osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is a debilitating bone disease where individuals are more susceptible to fractures because of their low bone mass density. Calcium is an electrolyte and its job is to maintain our bone mineral density to keep us strong and healthy. I'm sure as you've aged, you've heard many adults discuss the importance of milk. I'm sure you've even seen the celebrity Got Milk posters everywhere. Out of all of the recommended MyPlate food groups, vegetables, fruits, proteins, and whole grains, and dairy, calcium is mostly found in dairy products. As a whole, calcium sources include milk, cheese, yogurt, fishes such as salmon and sardines, along with leafy green vegetables. Let's discuss the relationship between calcium and osteoporosis. In childhood and young adulthood, Individuals are encouraged to drink lots of milk, cheese, yogurt, dairy, green vegetables, etc. Mainly calcium products. This is because at younger ages, your bone mineral density continues to rapidly increase until it peaks at the age of 30. After the age of 30 or around 30, it only begins to decrease from there. With this logic, to prevent osteoporosis, you would want to have the highest bone mineral density possible to prevent osteoporosis by the time you're age 70. These two graphs that I'm currently drawing depict these situations. If an individual is living with osteoporosis, many doctors and physicians recommend weight-bearing exercise and having a greater vitamin D and calcium intake. But what if I said instead that there was a missing factor between these two? That missing factor is vitamin D. Or more specifically, because sunlight is the main source of vitamin D and the most effective source, sunlight. So far, we've discussed the sources of vitamin D. A we've touched a little bit on the synthesis of vitamin D. But we have not yet talked about the role of or function of vitamin D in the body. So let's discuss a little bit about that right now. Overall, vitamin D controls the blood calcium levels in the body through the hormones calcitonin and the parathyroid hormone. It allows calcium to be absorbed per se. So if you have an individual who's getting their daily recommended calcium intake, they're eating a lot of cheese, milk, salmon, mackerel, sardines, leafy green vegetables. But let's also say that they're not getting enough vitamin D. While vitamin D can be found in fortified milk and salmon, it is not the most effective source. Sunlight is. So let's say this individual is not getting enough sunlight. They're intaking all of this calcium but not much of it is being absorbed because they don't have any vitamin d in their body all of this calcium sitting in our body just unabsorbed 
simply cannot be good for us, as researchers and scientists have discovered. When there is too much unabsorbed calcium in the body, it, be it begins to form a plaque within the blood vessels, similar to atherosclerosis. As you may have guessed, this is not good because it can cause blood clots and other complications as well. While vitamin D can definitely be found in food sources, studies show that sunlight is the best and most effective source. Now, let's go in a little bit deeper concerning vitamin D synthesis. When individuals are in the presence of the sun, UV rays from the sun hit our skin and a form of vitamin D3 named cholecalciferol, which is derived from cholesterol, is synthesized in our skin. The liver takes this compound and converts it to calcidol. This calcidol is then brought to the kidneys and converted into calcitrol. Calcitrol is the active form of vitamin D, also known as the form of vitamin D that is used to absorb the calcium in our bodies. This is the ideal process of vitamin D synthesis concerning that the sun is always around. However, we do know that not all parts of the world have the same amount of sunlight. Because of this, research and studies have shown that in areas where there are less sunlight, there are higher rates of osteoporosis as well. Considering everything that we've just discussed, this makes sense. As I've said earlier, this is also one of the reasons why milk is often fortified with vitamin D. Vitamin D and calcium go hand in hand together. To, so to ensure that individuals are getting their calcium absorbed, they fortified milk with vitamin D. However, this vitamin D is not enough as compared to the sun. In most cases, the sun provides most of our vitamin D. So always make sure you're drinking your milk and getting some sun every day. While this video was mainly on sunlight and osteoporosis, we can conclude that vitamin D and calcium alone are not enough to combat osteoporosis. Both of these substances, vitamin D and calcium, are one's best chance at preventing this debilitating bone disease. Well, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something about getting your sunlight in and how important it is.